in live. Uh, so before we begin, just um, I'm just checking with chat. This uh, on my chat is six people. Uh, so just tell me if your uh, your quality is okay, your video quality, your audio quality, whether you can read the slides, uh, whether you can play around with the chat. Uh, and also, if you uh, just share if you're using an Android device or, uh, or an iPhone device or, uh, or your laptop. So just uh, have a play with that for a while before I begin. So no, this is our first time, so there's a lot of things that we need to check out. Although we have tested a few times, but you never know when we do live. So testing, testing, okay. That's just me posting by my own, baru keluar. Oh, cool. Yeah, I can see the participants. Oh, hello. Okay, I can see now dari Bazila, dari Wazna, dari Hurin. Okay, so it looks like uh, we're on. Everyone seems to be able to uh, participate. So keep in mind, this is more of a live stream rather than a workshop. So. Uh, what, what I'm going to cover is introduction, so introduction to the series and myself, and then introduction to business and entrepreneurship. And then mostly we're going to be talking about process of starting a business in Brunei specifically, and then sharing with you the library programs and activities. And I will um, cover again or remind again the upcoming streaming content that we're planning for 2022. And at the end, if we have time or if there's a lot of questions, we can just have some question answers, maybe even chat, uh, well, chat through the chat feature. Uh. <clears throat> so introduction uh, to uh, this stream. Okay, So the series of entrepreneurship topics, uh, I'll, I'll share later. Uh, and then the snippets of the, those topics will be used for video content for online referral. Uh, there has been a lot of requests uh, from our previous participants to have an online content that they can refer to. So this is another reason why we're doing this. And then uh, the topic shared will be summary of the workshop content. So uh, what I'm sharing here is just the summary uh, of the workshops that we do, the master classes, the bright ideas, the business plan series. Uh, so I'll be referring back to those as well. Uh, and then I'll try to keep in mind uh, to get this to keep this interactive as I can using discussions uh, and Q&A between main topics. So if you have any questions, just post your questions on chat. Uh, and if I can manage, I'll go back to those chats and answer those questions after I cover those topics. And uh, last but not least, you may share the live link. Uh, so again, the, the link for this live wire uh, streaming, you can share with other people. Uh, it's better late than never if you want to share with more people about this stream. So just checking. Ah, salam ada bagi salam. Assalamualaikum salam. So I berkata tu mukri ada better video okay audio okay slightly double. Chat is working fine. Thank you. And device nya Android. Thank you for being very comprehensive. Okay. Ah, so this is my planned future content. Ah, for the whole year 2022. So January January today is the introduction to entrepreneurship and business. February ah is business ideas ideation and opportunities. March, legal processes, legal considerations in doing business in Brunei. Uh, April, sources of funding, we'll be uh, looking at how you can get funds in Brunei, uh, if it's you know, your own money or not. And then May, uh, we'll be looking at business model canvas and business planning. June, we'll be looking at market research. This will be very extensive. Uh, July, we'll be looking at marketing strategies, whether it's online or offline. August, looking at operations, uh, the process of uh, running a business, uh, the, uh, the flow, and action plan, how to uh, ex execute your plan. And then in September, organization and managing your teams. Uh, we'll probably put a few HR stuff in there. Uh, and then October, business finances, uh, financial planning and management. So we'll be looking at uh, profit and loss, cash flow, and so on. 
and uh, November and December a bit of uh, bonus a bit. So November using ICT for business. I noticed when we do workshops, a lot of the participants uh, do not use ICT very effectively. Um, disappointing for me. Uh, but uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, so I like to share uh, what we can do. Uh, so like using Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, and then uh, in December, we'll be doing uh, presenting and pitching. So uh, when whether you have a business plan, you, you pitch. Or uh, if you are selling your product and services, you're pitching to your customers. So those are the planned content for every month for our streams, uh, minimum. So we might be um, doing extra content if uh, if that's necessary. Uh, maybe potentially even do a podcast-like interview with people if there's a request for it. So uh, introduction to myself. Uh, I think some people might know me, uh, but I'll just share anyway. So my full name is Muhammad Fadilah Tudun bin Hajjassan. Alias Muhammad Hasbalah Bobby, just call me Bobby for short. Just don't call me baby. So, uh, I am an entrepreneur. I've done a few businesses. I'm also an endurance athlete. I like to swim, bike, and run. Usually, I prefer to go slow, not fast. Uh, and then, I'm also an enthusiast. Uh, I like uh, to learn about things. Uh, specifically, it's business, IT, and science. Uh, and uh, above all things, apparently, I like to share, I like to uh, help people, I like to educate. Uh, so whatever I learn, I like to uh, uh, bring it down, uh, uh, bring it to other people as well. I feel like whatever I know is probably, it, it has been useful for me, and it, it's probably useful for other people as well. So uh, I like to share. And then uh, formal and informal education, uh, this is uh, where it's quite interesting. Uh, my formal education is actually quite strange. Uh, in my younger years, I was from Had Islam Brunei, so I am well versed in religious studies. Uh, but then I moved on to Soas College where I was more focused on the science stream. And in UBD, I actually learned to become a chemistry and maths teacher. So my background is in the sciences. Uh, but uh, in uh, informally, I've learned entrepreneurship from uh, Pusat Sumber dan Pembangunan Kusawanan. Uh, in Sinaut, this was under Minister of Primary Resources and uh, Primary Resources, MIP, Minister of Primary Resources, but now MPRT, uh, Minister of Primary Resources and I forget transport, that's not right, MPRT. Uh, well, it was MIP and not MPRT, yeah. but now the entrepreneurship has moved on to EDC, uh, sorry, the EDC Entrepreneurship Development Center has been moved to uh, there, the Development Enterprise. Uh, and then I was also a participant of Livewire. Uh, and I've taken a few workshops under there as well, just for fun. Uh, in addition, I've learned a few, I would say, psychological uh, tactics, uh, techniques uh, to improve myself uh, from a lot of other places. Uh, learned my education in Singapore, Money and You in Malaysia, uh, and in the Sea Rock Stars. So, uh, th those are my education and my work and business experience. Uh, starting from 2006, I was a graphic designer, and 2007 until 2010, I was uh, actually running my own business, but freelance, I was uh, teaching ICT, and then 2011, uh, I've been uh, working as a business counselor for Livewire Brunei. Uh, so that's my uh, work experience, uh, but in terms of entrepreneurship, I've been in the food business, the food stalls, uh, Garai Malam, Garai Prayan, Garai, uh, well, Pasar Malam, uh, Garai Ramadan and so on. Uh, 2006, Internet Cafe, it was actually a dying business. Uh, so I bought uh, a dying business. I didn't know it was a dying business. And then I converted into computer school. I had the computers, uh, so I just converted that to a computer school. And thankfully, that was uh, sustainable for the next three years until I had to decide whether to continue or not the, the business. Uh, so uh, because computers were becoming obsolete. Uh, so I had to make a decision and I decided, decided to let it go. And that's when I worked for Livewire, 2011 until now. Uh, but on the side, I've been still doing, I've, I've still been doing business. Uh, 2014, I started a swimming school, Effortless Swim. Uh, so you might want to check that out as well. And 2015, uh, I was on the side helping business consultation outside of Livewire office hours. Uh, so that one I will charge. Within Livewire office hours, uh, it's practically free. 
So, uh, introduction to entrepreneurship. I'm just checking the chat if there's any questions. Uh, so, huh, okay. Um, okay. No questions so far. Okay. Again, reminder, if you have any questions regarding starting a business in Brunei, uh, please do so. Please ask. Or if you have any comments, just uh, just chat. If you want to chat amongst yourselves, that's okay as well. So, introduction to entrepreneurship. So, uh, what is business? What is entrepreneurship? So, there are several words that you might have seen uh, being uh, interchangeably used with business and entrepreneurship. Uh, one word is trading. That's just simply buying and selling. Uh, so, you're buying an item and then you're selling at a higher price. Uh, business is trading as well, but it's more long-term. Trading can be short-term, while business is a long-term uh, endeavor. And then... Uh, entrepreneurship is usually uh, reserved for new type of businesses, uh, whether it's new in that country or new in that area. Uh, so it's an enterprise. So the entrepreneurship is the venture itself, the enterprise is the organization. And then startup, uh, generally any business that's less than one year, usually new businesses, although some people have defined it as less than three years. And then you've seen the uh, the terms SME, MSME, and NMSME. So previously, it's just SME or small, medium enterprises. And then there's micro, small enterprises. So usually just uh, less than five people. And then now there's nano, micro uh, SME. Uh, so that's usually uh, including the one person business uh, or the uh, one man show uh, or the super employee. So that's um, basic terms, uh, basic words that I use for interest entrepreneurship and business. Now, uh, let's look at the reasons of entrepreneurship. So some of you looking at this uh, might have the, your own reasons. Uh, so these are the general reasons that people start their own business. So the first one is for yourself. Uh, so it's to earn a living uh, uh, and follow your passion. Some people would like to uh, you know, get more money or get money in itself. Some people uh, find it hard to get a job. So they start their own business. Uh, and in some cases, uh, like myself, even though I was working for Livewire, there's still a few things I followed and then eventually it became a business itself. So following your passion. Uh, and then uh, another reason for starting entrepreneurship is for other people. So you want to help other people. So you want to provide value or service to someone else and, uh, and you want to provide living for others. This is where you want to be the boss and you want to help out other people by giving them uh, employment, uh, giving them a living wage so that they can help themselves while helping you and helping other people. And finally, for the greater good, usually for the community, uh, uh, most uh, small companies, they usually want to provide for the village or for the family uh, and um, the, the surrounding areas. For the country, uh, some people want to help develop the economy and ultimately, maybe for, for the world, um, or in some cases, potentially now, like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, uh, for the solar system coming soon. So that's a reason for entrepreneurship. Okay, uh, and then uh, just checking again, some people might be coming in uh, just recently. So uh, this is uh, introduction to entrepreneurship. And now I'm looking into business ideas and opportunities. Later, I'll be talking about the process of starting a business. If you have any questions, again, just ask uh, in, in chat. And when I see the question, uh, I'll, I'll try my best to answer them. So now, business ideas and opportunities. So coming up with business ideas. Some people um, might have an idea uh, that they want to start into a business. Or some people, some people might want to start a business, but they don't have any ideas. Uh, so if you don't have any idea, these are things, uh, these are the techniques that you can use to find a business idea. And for those who already have a business idea, you might use this to confirm, uh, to, uh, to confirm that your idea is in the right uh, path, in the right place. So, uh, so the first way is, uh, first method is vision. If you, if you see the world in a certain way and you want to make it happen, uh, and then there's purpose, whether it's, um, uh, what, what you love to do and you want to make it into business. Uh, the third one is market needs. You look into what people need. We'll talk more about that later on the opportunities part. Uh, and then providing that need, provide, uh, providing solution for that need and charging money for it. 
and uh, more recently most people are more focused on design thinking and problem solving finding a problem uh, uh, technically the same as uh, the people's needs uh, but in the world there's a lot of problems and if you can find a solution to those problems you can potentially get money you can get value you can get wealthy from solving those uh, problems so in terms of vision uh, uh, creating the world that you want to live in uh, you start with the vision that you want to have uh, so the, the vision that you have that you want to make into a reality uh, so um, uh, one of my uh, businesses import uh, not important product so one of my businesses affiliate swim my vision is i want to see everyone being able to swim uh, so it has always been a frustration uh, it's, it, this is also related to passion uh, so i want to see people know how to swim because i'm actually frustrated when i hear people dying from drowning uh, because i believe uh, wholeheartedly that if someone knows how to swim regardless uh, they'll be able to survive uh, if, whether it's in the open water or i remember uh, reading the news recently in the river so uh, I, I believe uh, i believe that people should be able to survive i think because of the lack of swimming ability they can't uh, they, they didn't survive so my mission is to create uh, well uh, my mission is to provide swimming classes uh, or um, awareness about water safety and then from there, uh, you can look into creating objectives and activities for the organization or for the business. So again, this is the vision, uh, using the, your vision to create your business. So that's one, one way. That way is passion, uh, well, purpose. Uh, so uh, purpose, so it includes passion, skill, and money. So passion is what you love to do, what you love spending on, uh, what you love spending your time or money on and your effort on. And then your skill, what you're very good at. Uh, most people, interestingly, are quite ignorant of what they're good at. Uh, so I would like to get people to become uh, re uh, reflective or introspective. Uh, identify what's your skill. Uh, so again, uh, uh, coming back to one of my businesses, uh, the Internet Cafe and Computer School, I was very good at computers. I love computers. Uh, so those were the two businesses I started off. The recent one is Effortless Swim. I love swimming. Uh, and I uh, I love teaching swimming, so that became uh, a business. So if you if you love something and you have the skills, uh, then you can make money out of it. So then you can make it as a business. Um, so again, uh, on the skill, uh, uh, some people don't realize they're very good at something, but you know that you're very good at something if people ask you two things: either do something for them because they know you're good at it, or uh, they want you to teach them that thing. Uh, so uh, you might look into your past, your recent history. What is it that people have asked you to help them with? So it's very likely that you're actually very good at it, but you don't realize it. The only thing that you have left to do is actually charge money for it. Uh, so I started off my swimming school uh, with teaching friends, uh, but uh, I couldn't afford to teach friends for free simply because uh, every time they, they learn from me, um, they treat me food. Uh, so I um, gained weight. So I converted the free food to just asking for money. So then uh, I, I uh, made it into a proper business. Okay, so that's purpose. Huh? So finding uh, ideas in terms of your purpose. And then there's Maslow hierarchy of needs. If you're like the person that loves to help people, if you're the person who loves to fulfill other people's need if you, if you like to please people and then this is what you can look into so you can look into people's physiological needs uh, uh, by the way this is from Maslow's hierarchy of needs this is from sociology or psychology where uh, he theorizes these are what people need in order for them to not just survive but thrive uh, so the bottom one is physiological so what people need uh, to live so this is the most common business so food and beverages uh, and this, recently for the COVID, this medicine, uh, vaccines, so what you need to live, what you need to survive. Uh, on top of that, you need security and safety. That's where we need houses, we need uh, establishments, we need places to rest. Uh, and then uh, social needs, our needs to have friends, family, uh, to gather with other people, to have your own group, to have your own club. Uh, so you can actually uh, make that into a business as well. And then self-esteem, uh, the need for people to feel good about themselves. This is where like running events, they have medals uh, or um, hobbies. 
Uh, so whatever uh, our people are passionate about, they fulfill their, their passionate needs uh, and it makes them feel good about themselves. This is where usually hobby or interests come in. And then self-actualization. So this is higher. This is uh, where people need to develop themselves. This is where I think books come in. So that's, this is why books are still a thing uh, because people want to improve themselves. Uh, other than that, uh, it's, uh, you want to expand yourself. So unfortunately during COVID, we don't have the ability to fly as, as much as we can, but traveling is a way for us to um, uh, expand ourselves, to improve us, us, uh, ourselves as well. So that's uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And just checking chat. Ooh, Amal Jariah. To teach people to how to swim and survive. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so that's also that can also fulfill the people's need to survive in water. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one is design thinking. So this is one of the workshops that we run as well, design thinking, and we follow this uh, structure where we understand people's problems, empath empathize them, empathize with the customers' problems, and then define those problems, clarify it, make, uh, make sure what's the problem, then ideate, find out the solutions that come from that, uh, that can, the, the solutions that can solve those problems, and then prototype, to actually build something, uh, whether it's just a prototype or a model, uh, or even just a simple diagram, uh, to help solve that problem and to test it out. So to test whether the customers actually feel it's useful, uh, to test if, it, if there's a physical thing, to test whether it's usable, uh, so it's this is actually an iterative process. So if you're interested, you can sign up to our master classes on design thinking, on basically solving problems, uh, but making, creating something uh, that solves people's problem and then making it into a business. Then uh, business opportunities. So uh, we're looking into ideation and then uh, back to market needs. Uh, where are where are the business opportunities? So most people tend to look into the business to consumer bis uh, the business opportunities or the B2C. So you're looking at selling retail, you're looking at selling to the individuals. But you can also look into uh, B2B, business to business. So bigger organizations, bigger businesses want to do business with other businesses. Uh, so a good example, Shell, uh, Brunei Shell Petroleum uh, uh, provides oil and gas to uh, BSM, uh, no, BLNG first, to liquefy it, BST to transfer it, BSM to market it. So they're selling to each other. So there's a supply chain. Uh, you, uh, you might even be looking to consulting. So, so consulting a business is also B2B. So you can uh, not just do business with individuals, you can do business with businesses as well. Uh, most freelancers, like photographers, videographers, they can provide services not just to uh, weddings, but also to corporate events. So that's B2B. Uh, additionally, you can look into tenders, usually in the newspapers or on those company websites. You can look into the business opportunities that are available there. So similarly, business to government. Uh, so this sh uh, shouldn't be a surprise. They shouldn't uh, be. Uh, uh, to be uh, sh this shouldn't be new to anyone. But if you if you're new to this, then uh, I highly recommend looking into Polita Brunei. So that's where you can see a lot of government tenders. So you can see what are the business opportunities uh, that are open by the government. Uh, so, uh, but keep in mind, this is quite uh, quite competitive. Uh, so maybe just have a look into that. Huh? Sometimes there's simple tenders like grass cutting or landscaping, uh, or even supplying food or clothing. So there's a lot of uh, opportunities in there. Uh, but keep in mind, uh, the uh, uh, not. Uh, not say, saying any bad about the government, but this is common knowledge that the government is not that good of a paymaster, so there's a uh, sometimes delay. But of course, the government is trying to improve themselves. That's why they have the TPOR or the Kat Pemudian Orang Ramai. So they're trying to improve on those processes. Uh, so so far, it's it's being improved. Huh? The the doing business in Brunei index for Brunei is actually quite uh, quite good. So it's improving. So those are the business opportunities. So if you are still looking for business opportunities, you can actually ask, uh, ask around uh, or even consult with us uh, uh, and check out. Uh. So you can easily just Google um, a lot of these business opportunities. Okay, so that's uh, on business opportunities and ideation. So uh, second last part is process of starting a business. So before I start this part, I'll be checking the chat. Is anyone commenting or asking any questions? Okay, so far, okay. 
Okay, so next is process of starting a business. Uh, I like to summarize with this diagram. So whenever uh, you start a business, I, I think for someone who's not familiar, this will be useful. For those who have uh, run, start, start, uh, for those who have started and run a business, this will be very familiar. Uh, so the order might change, uh, might uh, switch here and there, but in general, this is basically everything that you need to know in starting and running a business. So we previously covered on ideation, so finding a business idea. So everything starts with an idea. Every time, everything starts in, in the mind. Everything starts with a person. So next, what you need to do is to plan and prepare for it. So whether it's a simple uh, jot on paper or a proper business plan, and then uh, from there, with the business plan, you can get funding, whether it's uh, from a bank uh, or from an investor. And then uh, you might be looking to legal requirements such as registering your business and the licenses involved. And then rental and expenses, uh, all the things that you need to spend on uh, with the funding that you've uh, uh, pro procured. Uh, and assets and stocks purchase, similar to the expenses, but this is more of the things that you need to buy in order for you to sell. Then operations and organization, what you need to do, uh, what you need to have or who do you need to have in running the business. And then marketing and sales, uh, making money in the business. And finally, admin and finance. This is something that most people don't really look at. They usually just uh, look, up, uh, look into the operations and sales. But uh, some, most people, most businesses will lack in the admin and finance. So we'll be looking a bit more in depth. But uh, again, reminder, some uh, of this can be uh, learned in depth, more in depth with uh, joining a few live wire workshops. Uh, so I'll be sharing those again later. So uh, planning and preparation. Uh, one of the things that we share, uh, that we teach in LiveWire, our masterclass is the business model canvas. Of course, you can probably learn uh, this by yourself. Uh, there's a lot of resources as well. Uh, the originator of the business model canvas is Strategizer. So you can check strategizer.com to have this high quality business model canvas. So the, from the word itself is business model. How does your business look like? Uh, what's the model? Uh, so in here, you can see in the center value proposition, basically the product and services. On the far right, you can see customer segments who you're selling to. And then uh, in between those is the channels and customer relationship, how you reach them and how you keep them. And on the left, you have the key activities, what you're doing, key resources what you need to have in order to do what you need to do. And the key partners, the people that you need in order to, to do all the things that you do. Sometimes, um, uh, you have to rely on other people. Even simple retail, you need to have a supplier. So th those are your partners as well. And then on the bottom is the cost and revenue structure. So uh, this gives an uh, interesting uh, overview of how your business would look like. Uh, in fact, this has almost replaced the other form of planning, which is the business plan itself, almost. But most, uh, most bankers will still want to look at the business plan. Some investors, um, especially the uh, more uh, recent or more sophisticated investor, will be uh, will be satisfied with just a business model canvas, uh, which then they will ask for a business plan. So, next one is business plan. So again, we have a, another workshop called business plan series. Uh, so we teach this in a two-day workshop, morning and afternoon, and we teach it in a practical way that you actually have a business plan by the end of the workshop. Uh, so we teach about uh, how to create a business profile, what, uh, listing down your products and services, uh, understanding your market through market research, how to do your marketing, the operations and organization, and then the finance in terms of profit and loss, startup costs, cash flow, and future plans. Uh, so again, this is just an outline uh, for my information. You can join our business plan series. Again, check our live website or IG uh, for updates. Okay, uh, so that's on business planning and preparation, checking with chat. Again, um, if anyone have any questions, just ask. So I don't see any questions so far. Okay, uh, so next, funding. So we've gone, uh, again, we'll look at the process again, uh, but a bit more in depth. Uh, so funding, where can you get funding? Uh, so we actually have another masterclass called Raise, Raising Capital, I think. Uh, raising Capital uh, Masterclass. So that's where you can find out more about funding. But uh, briefly, I can share uh, what you can do to get funding. Is first and foremost, the easiest one is your own capital. 
Uh, this is technically the easiest one, uh, but not the simplest one. Uh, it's your own money. So either you have your own savings or you do small business to build up your own funding uh, uh, and so on. Uh. So basically your own money. But most people want to do more. So if you want to do more uh, to accelerate yourself, to leverage yourself, then you need to use other people's money. So that's where the, the rest comes in. It's the investors, bank loan and grant and awards. So investors, uh, the simplest ones are your friends and family. Uh, of course, there's a saying friends, family and fools. I'll just omit the fools. So investors are other people who are willing to put their money into your business. Usually you'll, you'll have to pitch to them your business idea, to explain to them your business idea before they are willing. If, um, if they're good family or rich family, you just tell them you have an idea, they'll just give you money. If you're lucky, uh, please inform me, uh, please share with me their contacts. Uh, and the third one uh, here is bank loan. So several banks in Brunei. Uh, so the main ones uh, are BIBD and Baiduri. Potentially, you can also go for the other banks like Thai Bank of China, uh, Maybank, but they have their own terms and conditions. So easily, uh, you can get, uh, well, not easily, uh, easily the, the two more likely uh, candidates for bank loan is BIBD and Baiduri. Again, terms and conditions apply. And then there are grants and awards. So through governments and NGOs like ASN, you might be able to get grants. Uh, so basically, this is a, a gift uh, to people to start a business. Uh, so example is ASN. They have uh, Usahawan Bila ASN. They provide a small amount of uh, money, seed capital, uh, up to $5,000 for people who are underprivileged to, to start and run a business. Uh, and in addition, uh, awards, uh, LiveWire, Live Wire, we have our own business awards competition. So <clears throat> if you join the business plan competition, you provide your business plan, you pre present, you may win some cash prizes. Uh, not just awards, but also hackathons. Uh, so I think the prizes ranges, but it can go from $2,000 to $5,000, uh, depending on your categories and the position. So you can actually use the, that amount of money to start your small business. Uh, but if you're looking for huge amounts of money, then it's usually just the bank loans. Um, hmm, I forgot to mention, so grants, uh, there's something called co-matching grant from Darussalam Enterprise. You can actually uh, find out more on that uh, on uh, Darussalam Enterprise's website. So that's sources of funding. Anyone have any questions of where to get funding? No questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving on. So, assets, purchase, and expenses. So, what are the things that you need to buy? Okay. Uh, so, uh, it depends on whether you're a production uh, or a services business. Production is where you pro you create something. Uh, you you create a product. Uh, so, you need raw materials uh, to to process and then sell them. Well, services uh, where you provide services to customers. Uh, something that you might want to consider is something called bootstrapping. So if you don't have a lot of capital, this is an option where you can just use whatever is available, the cheapest uh, uh, method. So example, like a food business, you don't have to buy a whole kitchen set. You just use the kitchen at your home. Of course, th uh, th uh, there'll be some issues with that, but uh, that's the simplest thing simplest way someone can start a business, a food business. I right? just use your own kitchen. Uh, and then uh, looking at whether uh, it's an existing business or a new business. So an existing business might want, just want to expand, but most people are starting a new business. So there's a lot of things that you need to buy from scratch. Uh, you have to consider uh, or understand the terms capital expenses and operational expenses. So capital expenses is when you start off, where you buy fixed assets, the things that you need to uh, start off your business. So, well, operational expenses are the things that you have to pay every month. Uh, so some people, uh, neglect or ignore the operational expenses. Once they start off, then they realize there's a lot of expenses after. Uh, so it falls under uh, the operational expenses uh, consists of fixed costs and variable costs. Fixed costs are the things like electricity bills, uh, well, uh, electricity bills, water bills, and so on. And variable costs are, in general, the raw materials you need to buy in order to sell. So the more you sell, the more you need to buy. So that's why it's called variable costs. So those are the things that you need to uh, to purchase, uh, to, to pay for in business. And uh, legal procedures. Uh, so the legal uh, items, the legal 
things that you need to do. Simply, uh, uh, it's just these two main things, registrations and licenses. So registration is your identification. Uh, it was previously under registrar of companies, ROC. It still is, uh, but now is processed by this website, ocp.mofi.gov.bn. Uh, so nowadays, we can actually register online. We don't actually have to go to a government office to register. We can just register online. So just check the website out. And then once you have a registration, doesn't mean that you can easily do your business. Most business can be done easily, like retail business. Uh, but certain businesses might require licenses and approval. Simple one is like a restaurant. You might need a halal certification for your restaurant business. So more info on licenses and approval, you can go under business.mofe or mofi.jv.bn. So there's a list of uh, licenses and approvals that you can apply for within that website. Uh, so again, different businesses might require different licenses. So again, food was uh, halal. Uh, if you're a tuition school, it's under Ministry of Education. Uh, and if it's uh, an event or or uh, even a concert that's under home affairs and so on. So you can find out more information from uh, that uh, part. And then for more, uh, if you want to know more about legal stuff in Brunei, uh, uh, whether it's business or not, it's all under the Attorney General Chambers Office uh, uh, on the website agc.gov.bn. So those are the legal procedures. Okay, uh, next is operations and organization. So <clears throat> this is combined. Uh, so operations is generally what you need to do in the business. Uh, most small businesses don't think too much of this, but uh, if you're planning to grow, then you have to identify what are your processes. Uh, so in big businesses, this is called the standard operating procedure. But nowadays with COVID, most people think SOP means uh, uh, something against something that you do for COVID. It, it has existed before COVID, it's just more highlighted since COVID. So operations, what need, you need to do in the business. Huh? So this is a simple three-step diagram. Uh, this is the simplest way of looking at operations, but it can be more complicated than that. Uh, once you understand your operations, you can then look into organizations. Who do you need in business? So previously, operations is what you need to do in the business. Well, organization is who you need in the business. So for small companies uh, or nano micro SMEs, you can actually just do everything yourself. That is possible, uh, but it's, it's quite a heavy job, but you can't do everything yourself. Uh, so example, for a simple nasi katok business, you can probably do with one or two persons. But once you grow into a restaurant and catering, you'll probably have to hire more. Uh, so it's best if you can identify who do you need in that, uh, in that business. So that's organization. And then sales and marketing. So some, sometimes some people forget about this. Uh, they just open up their shop without thinking of how to promote their shop. Uh, so sales and marketing is quite important. So uh, a few things that you need to know uh, or need to understand uh, are these. So marketing funnels, uh, this has actually quite uh, recent. It's also called sales funnel or marketing process. So it's the three main processes of uh, of marketing. So first part is lead generation, getting people to know you. Sales is to convert people from uh, from visitors to buyers and fulfillment to have that uh, exchange and then um, keep your customers. Uh, so any marketing strategies will include these three processes. So your marketing can be either online or digital marketing or it can be offline marketing. But regardless whether it's uh, digital uh, or online versus offline, there's always sales. So sales is where you actually exchange the product for cash. Uh, so uh, you need to exchange uh, the product or service for cash. So this requires a bit of uh, selling. If it's offline marketing, you actually have to do one-to-one uh, -one sales. Uh, so salespeople are usually trained to do this, to, do, to make sales. Well, if it's online, you have to make the website or the IG interesting enough that people want to buy. So that's still sales. It's just a digital sales. Uh, past that, once you uh, get past the sales and, uh, sales and uh, pitching, then you have to consider customer services and relationship. So if you want to grow more, you need to keep your customers. You need to retain your customers. You need to make them a repeat customer. Uh, so that's why a few businesses have those loyalty cards. So you tend to buy more often 
from them. And uh, ultimately, uh, when you do sales, you need to record. Uh, in thankfully, in the digital age, we have technically uh, we have technically recorded every of our interactions with our customers. Uh, especially if you're using email or using social media or using WhatsApp, you actually have a customer database. So that's probably your most valuable asset in your business. You have a lot of customers when you, uh, when, you when people approach you, when, uh, when people ask you questions, when people purchase from you, you have a database of your customers. So you can use those customer database to actually promote to them again or ask them to share with their friends and family. So one of your uh, important assets. In fact, uh, one good example I like to share is WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp uh, is uh, is used for free, but it was uh, somehow not making money. But it was bought over by Facebook. But what makes WhatsApp so valuable was its database of customers, the telephone numbers. So that's uh, why Facebook uh, valued WhatsApp. It's the telephone numbers. They didn't have the your tel telephone numbers before. Uh, they have your email, they have your name, but ne they never linked it to your phone numbers. But with WhatsApp, they connected those information. So that's, uh, that's how valuable it is. Huh? If you look into WhatsApp's history, uh, how it was purchased by Facebook. Oh, sorry, it's not Facebook anymore. It's now Metaverse. Uh, and almost done, admin and finance. So uh, the back end, most of the things that people don't think about during business. Uh, is the admin and finance. So in planning, there's the startup costs, the sales forecast, uh, the profit and loss, the cash flow, the balance sheet, and the return on investment in planning. Uh, but in operations, there's a few things that uh, you need to keep track of. Uh, one example is point of sale. So when you do sales, you need to keep track the finances. Huh? You need to keep track the, the, uh, the transactions, buying and selling. Uh, and when you're doing business to business, there's the purchase order, uh, 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 the quotation, the invoices, and so on. And once you have those tra transaction, you have to keep track of the money and then probably how you're going to spend that money. So that's where budgeting comes in. And uh, looking at uh, on your stocks purchase, you have to make sure uh, everything uh, is in stock or else you won't be able to do business. And then there's the paying of the rent, uh, uh, rental fees, the bills, and the salaries. So, uh, and in the back end, uh, what most people don't realize when they do business, or sometimes when uh, some people do business but they 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 fail to do it, is the the keeping of financial records. Keeping in mind, uh, recently Brunei government has required uh, even small businesses to keep financial records. I think up to three or five years. Uh, they will be emailing you uh, your uh, e uh, re registered email for your business uh, on requesting for your financial records. Uh, so failure to do so, you might be fined. So uh, just keeping that in mind. So you need to prepare financial statements. Uh, and in other cases, in terms of admin, you need to do HR management, especially if you have a bigger business, if you're handling other people, uh, you have to handle their leaves, uh, their uh, salary, their bonuses, uh, their uh, other compensations. So that's on admin and finance. Okay, so finally, uh, we have about live wire. Just checking on the participants. No participants at this point. We'll just edit that out. <laughs> okay, um, I'm tempted just to skip through, or should I just record this and, and then make it for, the, for a recording? Saja? <laughs> I'm just checking with my doctor's and then we just record it. Okay, so we snippet saja. <laughs> okay, so about Livewire. So uh, Livewire is part of Shell. Uh, so in our part, it's called Shell Livewire Brunei. And our history started in 2001, where it was established in response to Brunei Darussalam Economic Council, or BDEC, to support infrastructure for enterprise development. Uh, and then we've had uh, courses such as the Bad Ideas, the BSOM, following the Shell International, uh, Shell Level International. And then 2008, we introduced our own programs, uh, like in the Leadership Camp. And uh, in that time, we also had the Level A Business Network, mem uh, Level A Business Network, uh, where we have alumni of the participants, the previous participants, to have to to join us in activities. 2013, we had. Brunei Entrepreneurship Education Scheme, or BEES, where we were working with uh, MOE to develop entrepreneurs uh, from childhood, from secondary schools. 
Uh, and then 2014, uh, we were involved with uh, Shell's uh, the uh, EBA, Energy Business Academy, where we funneled our participants uh, to secure contracts uh, with Brunei Shell Joint Venture. Uh, and in 2015, we reached a milestone of 10,000 participants. In 2016, uh, in um, collaboration with the EBA, uh, the energy program was launched. Uh, and then uh, in 2017, we refreshed our objectives to align with the Shell Live 2.0. And uh, in 2018, uh, we started off uh, this is our startup funding scheme where five SMEs secured startup funding. And then 2019, we introduced introduced the energy solutions, uh, which also led to the master classes that we have now. And then Agrobiz, uh, we have uh, agriculture project with IBTE Wasan uh, or IBT Agro Technology. And in 2021, uh, we aim to deliver with impact to business and to community, which uh, coincides with our 20th year anniversary. And uh, Shell Level Vision and Mission, uh, you can see our vision is uh, where we, <clears throat> our vision is to strengthen the local economies by promoting entrepreneurship, innovation, and meaningful employment. And the mission in relation to that is to stimulate the local economy through entrepreneurship, innovation, and meaningful employment. Every year, we support thousands of individuals to access the knowledge, skills, networks, and resources to turn the ideas into successful businesses. So we do this through workshops, masterclasses, uh, talks, uh, and even events. Uh, the Brunei uh, Shell Level Brunei objectives is to support the Level Brunei objective in itself to develop entrepreneurial cultural skills and knowledge. And to do so, uh, we need to become a center of excellence for enterprise development by offering opportunities which develop sustainable SMEs in the energy industry, uh, the, uh, and then to enhance access to finance, incubation, market linkages, technology, and mentorship. Library Brunei is also working in collaboration with other organizations to achieve these objectives. And we measure our success uh, by linking it to actual results and high value contribution to Brunei economy. We have five core areas of Shell Level Brunei, which includes agriculture, digitalization, energy transition, smart manufacturing, and waste management. And in 2022, these are the programs that we currently have. So starting from Bright Ideas, our basic entrepreneurship program, uh, become successful owner and manager workshop, business plan series, leadership camp, visioning workshop, and agro-based program. Then we have the bus FS funding, uh, the higher institution uh, entrepreneurship program, the business awards competition, the master classes, the mini workshops, and then the forum and dialogues, the business network, the level business network, and with international, with Shell Level International, we uh, we have the top ten innovators. I think uh, the the next one is coming uh, coming up soon, and then on the level here we have a co working space uh, called E Suite, and then we have a mini event, mini business awards event called Level Year Hackathon. And uh, upcoming is Innovate Brunei. So more, more news about that soon. So if again, if you have any questions at this point about LiveWire, please do so. Please ask. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Shell LiveWire Brunei Masterclass. Uh, so these are two to three hour workshops that applies theories and practical activities uh, to imbue, to equip entrepreneurs with the fundamentals of business skills from various industries. Uh, the current focus are on entrepreneurship and digitalization, and currently we have 22 topics in total. Uh, so these are the uh, the the, the master plus, uh, masterclass contents. Uh, so uh, we have the foundation entrepreneurship trainings. Uh, we have uh, customer discovery. We have go to market strategy, uh, and then we have access to finance. So more on financial uh, literacy, financial intelligence. Uh, digital web presence, especially the e-commerce and social media marketing. Uh, we have uh, one topic on human resource. It's not like strictly HR type of uh, training. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's like basic human interaction uh, or interpersonal skills uh, on team management. And then we have one on impact and sustainability, uh, on impact measurement. And uh, upcoming, uh, we haven't done uh, this one yet, but it's available on Shell Level International. It's Sustainability and Circular Economy 101. And apparently, uh, a, a very well thought of 
uh, masterclass is the pitching. So a uh, few people apparently are into pitching their business ideas, uh, joining business competitions, not just from Livewire, but from other uh, from other organizations organizations like there uh, on pitching. And uh, additional topics uh, we have is again our uh, collaboration with IBT Agro Technology is introduction to agropreneurship. Another program that we have is the Higher Institution Entrepreneurship Program. Uh, so we aim to equip students in higher institutions such as UTB, IBT, and UBD uh, with entrepreneurial knowledge and skills by providing library workshops, mainly the Bright Ideas and the Business Plan series. And we recommend them to join the Business Awards to kickstart their business idea. So we actually have a category uh, for the higher institutions uh, so they can propose the idea and see how good they are. And then hackathon, level hackathon. Uh, I, I call this a, a mini business awards. Uh, in general, this is a three-day hackathon designed to stimulate the entrepreneurial capacity of the youth to work together. So they'll be in groups uh, to develop suitable solutions from a broader perspective. Uh, perspective focusing on five core areas uh, that was mentioned: agri-technology, waste management, digitalization, smart manufacturing, and energy transition. And uh, our objectives is to boost the culture of innovation. Uh, so we don't just want like simple food and beverage ideas. We want to uh, move past that. We want want to do more than just food and beverage. Uh, so we want to further establish the exchange of ideas, efficient critical thinking, motivated by the passion for a common goal. And this is in order to align with Shell Lavoie's aim to support the development of youth entrepreneurs with access to resources and finances. So we want to provide opportunities for the participants to learn uh, in the hackathon to develop their skills further for the future ready. Uh, of work, the future work. And finally, to strengthen alumni and network engagement by empowering collaboration and access to opportunity. So once uh, they've uh, finished the hackathon, hopefully they can get mentorship from our alumni as well so uh, to help them move along. Then uh, we have our Bright Ideas workshop. <clears throat> so this is our fundamentals, our basic entrepreneurship workshop. The aim is to raise awareness of self-employment and business startup as a realistic option among unemployed Bruneians, especially age 18 to 40. I just want to clarify, it's not just uh, 18 to 40, it's just focus on them, but outside those are also accepted. <clears throat> Facil uh, it facilitates uh, participants to think through the issues involved when starting a business. So it's not just the, the processes that I just shared with you, but it's also uh, the psychological aspect to it. I'll probably cover that in the next um, in the next uh, live stream. Uh, and then to provide information about starting a business and to assist them to develop their business ideas and to introduce a framework of thinking when starting a business. Again, uh, on the psychology of starting a business, it's not just the business itself. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> next is the business plan series. Okay, uh, this is, uh, this used to be a four half day workshop, but uh, in, uh, with the demand, it has been converted into a two full day workshop, so morning and afternoon rather than uh, just mornings. Uh, that's why it's called business plan series. So it gets participants to discuss and present their business plans. So uh, they will learn what is a business plan, uh, about an executive summary, creating their business profile, uh, and uh, calculating the initial setup costs. So this is a practical uh, course. So by the end of it, they have all these items already for their business plans. So furthermore, they'll be learning about market strategy, organization operations, and financial management. Uh, specifically, it's uh, cash flow uh, and profit and loss, and then they'll also be presenting their business plans. So uh, in during the whole course, they will learn deeper about different types of products and services, uh, how to do market research on it, identify their competitors, and utilize uh, the tools to their advantage such as the past factors and the SWOT analysis. Uh, become a successful owner and manager workshop. This is a four day workshop for participants uh, wanting or wishing to progress further with building their business ideas into actual businesses. The program objectives include developing a business idea and doing associated market research, preparing a business plan and financial forecast. So this is brief from the business plan uh, series workshop. Then running a business, including marketing, uh, management, and financial control, will be inviting specific speakers uh, to give uh, talks on these. And understanding the Bruneian entrepreneurial ecosystem, uh, where sometimes we invite uh, different government departments 
uh, to help you uh, with other topics. Uh, uh, the main ones that we have we've previously done is, uh, for example, from Minister of Religious Affairs on the halal process. Uh, we've also invited on intellectual property. Uh, if you want to trademark your your uh, your logo, and so on. So that's uh, the BSOM workshop, uh, and then we have leadership camp. This is a three day, two nights uh, getaway. Uh, uh, usually we do it in Temurong. So the prime focus of the camp is to enhance and revitalize your energy, your enthusiasm, and refine your directions, uh, and then uh, lead you to the steps for uh, progress and to lead. Uh, so this involves physical and mental challenges. And uh, it aims to instill leadership qualities and building up future community leaders. Uh, hence, therefore, it's leadership camp program. So this is usually promoted to those people who have attended the Bright Ideas workshop, uh, the BISOM workshop, uh, and uh, for those who have already started their business or embarked on their business. Uh, the other criteria for, for people to join this is they are required to be physically fit uh, and to be in this enthusiastic to participate in the challenges, uh, especially in managing time. So they, uh, when people join this, uh, they, they learn a lot more than just leadership itself. So that's leadership camp. Then visioning workshop. Uh, this uh, is to establish committed individuals in an organization. So this is a lot similar to business plan series, but this is more on an organization or an NGO. Uh, so in the organization, all the individuals are to share their equal fundamental vision to drive the organization in realizing and accomplishing their vision. So uh, this, as mentioned with the visions, uh, the vision mission statement. Uh, so this is, uh, we can help to develop that. So once we do that, we can explore all venues of information, data and knowledge. Uh, equally share the findings to translate those visions into workable formulations uh, and this will drive uh, the energy of the individuals uh, and useful force every in individual to fully participate and realize the organization's mission. And, and based on the formulations, uh, it's using a proven system whereby all individuals can equally share the fruit of success. So everyone will benefit and then uh, to fully appreciate and participate in achieving the organization's vision. So again, uh, that's why it's called Visioning Workshop. It focuses a lot on the vision, but not just on the vision, but on realizing that vision. So uh, converting that vision into reality. Then we have the famous Level Brunei Business Awards. So it's designed to reward and recognize outstanding young entrepreneurs in Brunei Darussalam who produce high quality business plans and conduct impressive business operations. So it's either uh, people who start up or people who are running uh, already running their businesses. So the awards is an integral part of the Live Wire International Program organized all around the world. And usually, we, uh, potentially, we will invite the winners uh, either to join the BASFS for funding opportunities or uh, to join the international competitions uh, that were mentioned, such as the to uh, top 10 innovators. Uh, and as mentioned, the Business Award Startup Funding Scheme is uh, a scheme, a, fun a funding scheme offered to uh, the Business Award winners and participants from the Business Plan series. The amount of funding uh, is a percentage of the initial capital to allow for immediate startup uh, for the business. This ranges as low as $5,000 to a maximum of $50,000 and it is payable within 36 months uh, with flexible terms of payment. The fund uh, in general is interest free, uh, but the participants are reminded to pay. So this, again, this is funding, not, not a grant. Uh, so it's, it, we're borrowing money. Yeah? Uh, but keep in mind that money is not just uh, to give back to us, but in order for us to cycle back that money to help other entrepreneurs to start up their business. So the um, the expectation is within the 36 months, you pay back. And then once you pay back, it can be used for other entrepreneurs as well. Then the business network or the Live Web Brunei Business Network, uh, and we usually call it LWBN. It's a platform for interactions between Live Web participants and other business communities. So we're aiming to create uh, a community for our alumni to interact with each other, uh, more of a, a networking uh, opportunities for the alumni. So it, uh, um, <clears throat> the LWBN uh, aims to have social and business interactions of previous and present participants to create opportunities to realize their completed business plans, uh, mentoring. Uh, so uh, usually the, 
long time running business owner uh, might be able to coach or mentor the the young entrepreneur and active participation in all fields of business is organized by Laboya and to enhance individual and business development uh, so they're expected to share their business interests skills and experience uh, and here we have a mention on agrobiz uh, so it's a collaboration between Shell Lever Brunei, IBTE Agro Technology Campus or IBTE Wasan that was formed in 2019. We focus on creating agropreneurs that focus mainly on rice industry and cash crop. Uh, the objectives is to commemorate with His Majesty Sultan Haji Hassan Al-Bulkiah, Ma'izadun Wadallah, uh, Sultan dan yang dipertuan negara Bunda Salam, Tita on elevating the production numbers of countries' rice self-sufficiency and to produce 60 skilled young entrepreneurs within three years. So the participants consist mainly of IBT Agro Technology Campus students, but it is open to public uh, through Pusat Pembangunan Belia via the AgroBiz Plus program. Uh, so you can find more information on this, more updates on this on our AgroBiz uh, department. So here are a few pictures of the AgroBiz event, uh, where we have the guest of honor looking into the paddy uh, harvesting process. So again, this is a collaboration within Shell uh, and IBT. Uh, and here we have iCashflow.bn. So this is an innovative mobile app that provides a digital platform for cash flow management for entrepreneurs in Brunei. But individuals might uh, might be able to find this useful as well. Uh, so it encourages cash flow management habits via a digital platform to reach to the entrepreneurs and startup founders. The main features of the iCashflow BN is it has a simple and efficient uh, data visualization dash dashboard uh, for cash flow projection and reporting. And the reports can be emailed to your email accounts, which have to be verified. And for now, it's only available for Bruneian, uh, for Bruneians. Uh. So uh, make sure that your country setting for your app is in Brunei. If it's in other settings, then it won't be uh, available in your app. It won't show up in your app store. And it's available on Google Play and Apple App Store. Uh. So I'll just pause here for a while. Uh, if you want to uh, download the iCashflow.bn app, so just scan. Uh, so the QR code on the left is for the Apple App Store and the QR on the right is for the Google Play. Make sure it clicks. <laughs> okay, so that's enough. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, next is we recently compiled a list of our alumni in this Shell Live Web Brunei Alumni Profiles ebook. Uh, so it also consists of our events and milestones uh, over the course of operations for the past 20 years. Uh, this is again to commemorate our 20th year anniversary. It is available as a digital copy uh, that is available on our local website. So on the bottom there, there's the ebook. You can scan the QR code and just um, just view the the, the ebook. Huh? So you can again look at the programs available. So what I shared earlier, uh, you can read up more on them, and then you can read more in detail of our milestones, and you can find out more of our selected alumni. Okay, finally, uh, if you want to contact uh, LiveWire or you want to get more information, uh, you can go visit us at Unit 1 and 2, Block A, Kampung Kiorong, Jalan Pasar Baru Gadong, Bandar Seri Begawan, BE 1318, Brunei Darussalam. Generally, it's the Progressive Headquarters building next to the Gadong slash Kiorong roundabout. Uh, so, you can also check on our website, livewirebrunei.com. And you can also look at our social media uh, at Instagram uh, or on Facebook uh, at LiveWire Brunei. Uh, alternatively, you can scan the QR code. Uh, I think that will lead to the LiveWire website. Okay, uh, so that basically ends the, uh, the stream. Uh, so uh, just a reminder, these are the topics that we will have for the next few months. 
So if you have any feedback uh, on what you want, what you expect to see, uh, so uh, please uh, share on uh, on the comments or the chat. Any questions? No questions. <sighs> okay. So time now is 3.30, so it's almost exactly one hour from our starting time. Okay, uh, so if no questions, then I think we can end the session. Checking back with the, the back end. <laughs> so back end, can I stop there? <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, checking us out. So this either um, uh, some parts of this will be available still online, uh, and we'll probably include them as snippets, so you can look at them uh, via categories or the the, the subtopics. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So let's. Uh, uh, so for those who have watched, uh, thank you very much. And for those who are watching the recording, I uh, hope you can uh, add comments uh, so that we can check out any feedback on these recordings. Thank you very much. Bye.